Hey, welcome back to Simply Cyber, your go-to source for cutting-edge insights in the world of cyber. Today, we have a fascinating interview for you with Joe Marshall, Senior Security Strategist at Cisco Talos. I had the pleasure of meeting Joe at Black Hat this year, one of the largest and most prestigious cybersecurity conferences in the world where experts gather to discuss the latest trends, tools, and threats in the industry. I personally was attending Black Hat as a cyber practitioner to make sure that I was staying ahead of the curve on what is current and what the threats are we need to know about. Joe is a leading expert on critical infrastructure protection, IoT device security, and the cybersecurity of large industrial systems. If you've ever wondered about the security challenges facing power grids, manufacturing facilities, and even agriculture, you're in for a treat. In this interview, Joe shares his experiences securing the power grid in Ukraine, reveals how Cisco discovered the potential of GPS jamming, and dives into the unique cyber risks facing industrial control systems. We'll also explore the emerging threats in this space and what's next for ICS security. So whether you're involved in critical infrastructure or simply curious about cyber threats that impact our everyday lives, this conversation is packed with expert knowledge that you won't want to miss. So let's get right into it. Here's my interview with Joe Marshall. How did it come to even be is a great question because sometimes in cybersecurity, you have to be at the right place at the right time. And in my particular case, I was just having dinner with some Ukrainians who were in a very difficult position and a combination of my time and expertise in cybersecurity and industrial control systems serendipitously met. And I was able to form a relationship with them, help them discuss their technical issue, and then assemble this incredible team of volunteers to go to Ukraine and help them fight off electronic warfare and keep the lights on. So the work that we had to do had never been done before. This has never been attempted, to my knowledge, anywhere. What we were able to do is we were able to diagnose the exact issue, which is that GPS is vital to power grids, not where you are, when you are. Most people don't know you can get time from GPS. Um, uh, matter of fact, the acronym for GPS is Precision Navigation and Time as well, PNT, PNNT. So once we knew that they were having issues with time to help balance their power grid, also while being shot at, very, very difficult, we were able to basically say, you know what, I think we have some kit inside of Cisco that can help you, but we don't know if it's going to work. We're going to have to figure it out and we're going to have to play around with it. We're going to have to do a hack job. We're going to have to be A plus hackers and we figured it out, but it was a, an eight month journey just to get there. Yeah. We determined that I cannot trust a satellite in orbit using a radio to communicate to my radio to give me accurate timing, which is vital for power grid operations. So we said, we're not going to, we're not going to, we're not going to mess around with that. We basically took our Cisco kit, these industrial ethernet 5,000 switches that have these amazing, robust clocks inside of them already. And they're made to go like in nasty places that are wet or hot or cold things you don't normally want to put electronics. And we were able to modify them and insert them into these really critical substations in Ukraine that allowed us to say, look, when the satellite's unavailable, it's cool. We've got the watch, literally the watch. And that turned out to be the key to making the Ukrainian power grid be stable. Um, and uh, to this day, uh, I recently got a statistic from the Ukrainians. They've had in eight months, 398 air raids, and we've kept the lights on in an additional 16.2 days because of the work that we've done. Like everyone who has a job or a career, sometimes you find it, sometimes it finds you. Uh, in this particular case, it found me. I, I was an IT guy. I was a break fix sysadmin, Microsoft guy doing server and network administration. And I said that uh, I wanted to branch out and get out of that life. And I was doing cybersecurity as part of that role, but it wasn't in my title. You know? And frankly, if you're in IT these days, you're definitely a cybersecurity professional, whether you know it or not. My local electric utility wouldn't take no for an answer. And they wanted an interview. And I said, sure, question mark, not really understanding 
much about how civilization works with power. And I showed up and that began that the two year initial ride into my life working for a utility. And now I'm at Talos. Unique risks are going to be uh, danger and loss of life. All right. So if, you know, I'm a lineman or line woman and I'm out there messing around with high voltage power lines, that job is inherently very dangerous. So safety, safety, safety is foremost in the minds of anyone who's doing oil and gas or electric grids or manufacturing. You know, they want to they want to limit accidents and they want to keep people safe. And there's a lot of architecture, a lot of information technology and operational technology systems there to keep them safe. When you start to mess around with that, you really start to poke at it. Not only do you perhaps break that system adversely, but you can impact human lives. And that's why we take it so serious. So some examples that I would see are um, a, a commoditized, oh, I say commoditized, a criminal cartel, if you will, perhaps getting access to the more sensitive elements of a business like a manufacturer, disrupting their operations, causing them to lose money, thus feel compelled to pay that ransom. Things like manufacturing are very sensitive to disruption. They can lose money quick. On the other side of the fence, nation states have a vested geopolitical interest in the denial, disruption, or degradation of critical infrastructure for other uh, entities that they're not friendly with or that they may become unfriendly with. And so being able to insinuate myself inside of a critical infrastructure, a power grid or a water utility or an oil and gas facility to perhaps do some kind of cyber damage or disruption is also a risk that, that we see. This is a really hard question. I do not know what the next risk could be. As the proverb goes, may you live in interesting times is sort of a curse. I'd rather live in boring times. I don't know if we truly know what the next risk is going to be. Much like the foundations of cybersecurity, uh, strong segmentation, asset inventory management, um, you know, user education and training. If your fundamentals are strong, you will be able to weather any threat that comes your way that you did not anticipate. So it's easy to get sort of myopically fo focused on the horizon of what's the next major cyber threat. Is it nation state? Is it a new piece of malware or a zero day? You know, a not pet you style event, you know, these massive events. But if you've taken the time to really focus and look internally at your enterprise, at yourself, at your business processes, the technology, and frankly, the importance of having good people working for you to help keep you safe, you'll find that you can take any bump in that road and you'll be in a much better shape. It will be perfect, but you'll still be walking after it. It's the bend, not break philosophy. And that's where I see um, uh, a more positive way to think about threats and risks, especially in the horizon that we just don't know what's coming down that pipeline. Right, so there's, there's two elements to think about with that. One is as a cybersecurity person, the other as a business person. So typically, and this is not a new phenomenon by any stretch, right? We call it convergence. IT, OT segments typically are becoming more and more intertwined. And it's not because of laziness or lack of education. Typically, there are business imperatives that are driving these integrations. We need to be faster, quicker to market. Uh, we need to make uh, enhancements for regulatory reasons, for safety reasons. There's a lot of great business imperatives that exist, and that might exist because of uh, uh, outside factors that are beyond the control of that of that utility, oil and gas facility, manufacturing facility, water treatment plant. You just don't know. So, convergence is okay. It's in my community. It's a very unpalatable phrase to say, but frankly, it's inevitable and it's okay. Where I think that the cybersecurity persons and the leadership need to focus is what risks does it introduce? How do I feel about the cost of the mitigations the, and the risk that I'm going to have by having more IT in my OT space? And uh, what can we do to limit our exposure? And then that's a very informed and frankly, deep conversation you need to have. Um, and But if you can go there, then you will be fine. Yeah. Uh, it, it's significant. 
it's significant. So if you are ever, you know, have the, the fortune to work in, you know, the oil and gas field or the electric utility field or any industrialized field, maritime, for example, the things you realize is that these systems that you purchase to do the thing are really expensive, right? Um, you're bringing in integrators, you're bringing in support contracts, you're bringing in the actual capital cost of the equipment itself, all of these things. If you're in a regulated industry, like you're an electric utility of some kind, I don't get to go shake a money tree and then have investment dollars fall out when I want to upgrade a system five years later because I'm a regulated entity like the the public service commission that governs my state or my province may say no you can't raise the rates on these people right make do so what you find is that dollars really constrains the life cycle of these systems and they're meant to last they can go five to 15 years depending on the health of the systems and is it still doing its job not broke don't fix it right so that is probably the thing that worries me the most because uh, with legacy equipment you have end of life uh like the, the vendor doesn't support that product anymore or the vendor doesn't exist anymore which happens quite frequently as well or they're acquired or something like that happens and i may lose support for my my, my equipment that i need to cyber secure legacy equipment is always going to be the bane of any cybersecurity professionals risk uh, uh, picture, I think. Yeah. One of the things that I believe in is, um, as a cybersecurity professional, if you listen with empathy to your business leaders, if you listen with empathy to your, you know, your crusty old lineman who's been doing this and is very risk averse to cybersecurity. If you are just having dinner with somebody one night about a war in Ukraine and you just listen and then be present, you don't have to have all the answers, but just be present. You can do real good in this world, real good in this world. And you never know when that opportunity is going to come across. So I firmly believe that the profession of cybersecurity can make amazing differences for the world. And it does not have to be some incredible thing like what we did in Ukraine. It could be, you know what? We we did an audit and we saved somebody's life because that would have been bad if, if something bad happened. And it is a terrible responsibility, but also a privilege. Um, and that's what I believe in. And that brings us to the end of our conversation with Joe Marshall. I hope you gained valuable insights into the complexities of securing our critical infrastructure and the evolving threats to industrial control systems. If you found this discussion enlightening, please give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to Simply Cyber for more expert interviews like this and in-depth cyber content. Don't forget to leave your thoughts and questions in the comments below. I'm always interested in hearing what's on your mind. Thanks for watching and remember, stay secure.